Dear God, thank you so much for your word. Thank you for your grace. Thank you, God, because you have brought us to this place, which is your house, to know you more, God, to get closer to you, and to live more according to your will, not ours. God, we ask you that today you would speak to us. Lord, through a message that I know, Lord, you have not only put it in my heart, God, but you have plasm you, you, you put it in the scripture, God. You put it there in black and white so that we would read it, we would reflect on it, we would dive into it, and we could live it out. Lord, I ask you right now that you give us sensitivity to your word. Would you remove any obstacles, remove any distractions, remove anything, God, that wants to draw or take away uh, from your word. Thank you so much, Jesus. We love you so much. In your name we pray. Amen and amen. You may be seated. You know, I was, uh, you know, reflecting a little bit about, you know, moms and Mother's Day, obviously. You know, we don't always do theme, like theme sermons. You know, like if it's Father's Day, no one cares. You know, it's like, oh, whatever, Father's Day. When is Father's Day anyway? Anybody know? January what? Every day is Father's Day. That's right. Every day. June 18th. Dude, that's, really? You put it on a, on a different holiday? You put Juneteenth on Father's Day? That's how unimportant Father's Day is? Really? Ryan, when is, when is Father's Day? See, no one knows. No one knows. Anyway, but there's a reason. There's a reason why Mother's Day is so important. There really is a reason. By the way, dads, you're important too. You are important, you know? Uh, but, but, man, there's a reason. Moms are incredible. Moms are different. Moms are built different. Moms have a different kind of love. I love my kids. I really do. I, I love my three boys. I love them hard. I mean, I, I love them to death. I would kill anyone and I would die for these children. I would. But moms love different. You know, when they get hurt, they don't run to me for some reason. They run to mom, right? When they have a, a need, they go to mom. Like, I, I don't know what it is. There's this special love, this tenderness, this different kind of love, this godly love. I don't believe that there's a love closer to the love of God than a mother's love. And I'm not saying that you cannot love your spouse or your wife or your, you, your husband, that you can love your husband in a beautiful way. But I believe that we learn to love first through our moms. Now, I may be sounding like a big mama's boy because I was raised just with my mother. But this I do know, that every one of us here, whether it's your mom who gave you birth or your mom who raised you, because a mom is not someone who gives you birth, but someone who gives you life. Amen? Like how many of you perhaps had a grandmother who took mom's role, and she not only kept you alive, but she kept you well. Amen? Or maybe it was an aunt, or maybe it was a, your friend's mom who took you into your, to her house and fed you the same food and, and cared for you and worried for you. Amen? So because a mom, again, a mom is not one who gives birth, Right? Someone, someone was talking to me a while ago, you know, about adoption. And, you know, could this mom say, mom said, would I ever love my adoptive children as I love, as I would love my, you know, natural birth children? Uh, you know, back then, before this person adopted, she couldn't fathom how that could ever happen. But she didn't realize that the Lord puts this beautiful, incredible love of his. And it's incredible how much his mother loves these kids. If you know that a mother is not someone who gives birth, but someone who gives life, then you know what love I'm talking about. Amen? And so I want to share with you something that the scripture says about a mom, not just so we could love our mothers more and honor them and care for them more, because I do think that we live in a very selfish society, very self-centered society. I'm not knocking where we live. I love where we live, but I think it is very self-driven, self-centered. It's not a communal society. And it has its ups and downs, of course. It has its, its advantages and disadvantages. But I do believe that we need to honor our parents, especially our mothers, more. And if you could agree with me, please say amen. Amen. We can always honor our mothers more. I want to take you to the scripture in the book of Exodus. You don't have to necessarily open up to that. We're not going to stay there too long. But in the book of Exodus chapter 20, um, you have this amazing you know, Ten Commandments that everybody knows, right? Ten Commandments that were written for you, for me. The Ten Commandments that God gave to Moses to teach to the people. These were written in stone tablets so that they wouldn't be changed. Amen? Like they were set in stone. Whenever we say, oh, it's set in stone, that's literally what that means. Like this is word. This is not going to change. It's already done. Don't try to haggle. This ain't offer up. Like God said, it's Ten Commandments and these are the ones you're going to obey. 
And these are the Ten Commandments. The first one, you shall have no other gods before me. That's a pretty good commandment. The second one, you shall not make idols. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. And then right in between, right in the middle, right, the fifth commandment, which divides all the other commandments because the first ones are all about God. The first four commandments are between us and the Lord. First four commandments are between us and the Lord. And then the next commandments are between us and people. So it's broken down into sections. The first section is how we relate to God. He, he goes first, right? The Lord your God is to be loved beyond anything else. Second commandment, it's also about God. Don't make any idols. Don't have idols in your life. Don't raise idols for yourself, whether it's money, your car, your girlfriend, doesn't, your children. It doesn't matter. They cannot be your idol. God is your God. Amen. There's no one else, nothing else, just God, right? The third one he tells you, right? Don't use God's name in vain. It's not an additive to a cuss word, right? God's name is holy. God's name is not to be used like a toy or like, like, you know, like an expression. His name is holy. Do not profane his name. The fourth one, he says, spend time with me. Enjoy what we've done together. Not only that, take that day that I reserve for you and I, meaning let's do date night. Right? It's the Lord saying, I need to be able to stop. You need to be able to stop and spend time with your Lord. That's called the Sabbath day. Right? And then he starts talking about how we ought to relate to other people. And the first one that he says is this commandment. Listen to the commandment. Honor your father and your mother. And this is the only commandment out of all the Ten Commandments that has a promise. No other commandment does God give you a promise. Okay? Whenever I tell my kids to do something... I don't tell them to do something so I can give them something. Sometimes they just need to do something. It's got to do something. That's probably why they go to mom when they cry, right? <laughs> but there's sometimes they got to pick up the room. They don't get a promise. You got to pick up your room, right? You don't get a promise. Put your shoes not in the middle of the kitchen. Put them where they belong. Like you don't get a promise for that commandment. Anybody understand what I'm saying or no? Like God doesn't have to give you promises, right? He is the Lord. But with this one, he gives us a promise. Out of all the commandments, this is the one that comes with candy. Like this is the one that he says, honor your father and your mother. And then he goes on to say, so that you would have a long life in the land that I gave to you. So you could live long and prosper, right? He says, you will have a long life. You're going to have a better life. Quality of life will increase for you, right? In the land that I gave you, meaning not in the land of the enemies, you're going to have blessing if you honor your mother, if you honor your father. And then he goes on with the other ones, right? Do not murder, duh. Right? Do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not bear false, false witness, do not covet. Listen, one commandment in the middle, and he says to you, the first commandment on how to relate to other people is relating to your parents. And I wonder why that is. It is because it is at home where we learn to love, where we learn to respect, we learn to honor. Amen. Now here's the thing that I found about the difference between a mother and a father. Don't get me wrong, moms are fierce. But a father exhorts different kind of authority. A mother exhorts authority in a very different way, in a loving, in a tender, in a kind way. A mom has the ability to look at you, and you know exactly what she's trying to tell you. Matter of fact, she doesn't even have to look at you. She looks away, and you know what she's trying to tell you. Good moms have a way to speak without words. Moms have a way to communicate love and care. They have a way to communicate approval and disapproval. Listen to this. This is so awesome to me. I, I was reading the scripture the, in the book of um, uh, Romans chapter 16. And we preached about this man, Simon of Cyrene. You guys have heard about Simon of Cyrene? No, no? I'll remind you in a little bit. But this is Paul talking in the book of Romans. He's writing this letter, right, to the Romans. And he's saying, he's one of his last letters. Not the last one, but one of his last letters. And he's writing and he says, Greet Herodion, my fellow Jew. Greet the Lord's people from the household of Narcissus. Give my greeting to Trifena, to, uh, uh, Trifena, to Trifosa. <laughs> cool. Okay, the Lord's workers and to dear Persis, who has worked so hard for the Lord. Greet Rufus, who the Lord picked out to his very own. So cool. And also his dear mother, who has been a mother to me. It says, greet all these people. And I found out who all these people were. See, these people were important. Some of these people were people that worked with him, that were in prison with him. Some of these people were the first converts of Asia. The first people that believed in Jesus. The first people that believed in Jesus in Asia. Listen, the first Christians in Asia. He says, greet them. The first people that said yes to Jesus Christ. 
He names all these important people, powerful people. This is one of his last letters. It's not just a hello, it's also a goodbye from him. And then he says, by the way, greet Rufus. And then he says, greet also his mom, who has been a mother to me. The Bible is not thick enough, and it doesn't tell us why this woman who has no name, just a beautiful title. Remember that. She has no name, but just a beautiful title. She doesn't need a name. Because she has something so much more amazing. She has earned the love of Paul. The Bible doesn't say what she did. It doesn't explain why. All I know is this, that we don't know Paul's mother's name. Anybody know Paul's mom's name? If you do, you have a weird Bible. <laughs> like it's not the real Bible. It doesn't appear there. His father doesn't appear there. Paul doesn't talk about his king. He doesn't talk about his family, his descendants. But talks about one woman. And he says, she's like a mom to me. Like a dear mother, another version says. You know who this woman is? I started digging a little bit more. And I know who she is. Because I know who her son is. Her son's name is Rufus. A Rufus appears in the scripture. And Rufus, Rufus happens to be the son of the Siren man. If you don't know where Siren is, Siren is in Libya. Which is northern Africa. So Rufus is this northern African man's son. You may remember this man from Cyrene. His name is Simon of Cyrene. You see, see, Simon of Cyrene had two sons, one of which was Rufus, who became a pillar in the scripture. He became a pillar in the church. Actually, he calls him a choice man. Another version says, a man who the Lord chose wisely. Rufus, the son of the Cyrene. You see, Rufus was there. I'm pretty sure the Bible is not thick enough. But what I do know is this, that Simon of Cyrene was picked out of the crowd to carry the cross of Jesus Christ. Who else here can say, what other position in the scripture is more <laughs> respected, more amazing, other than Mary who carried the actual son of God in her womb? Who else can say, I carried the physical cross of Jesus Christ? You see, this man from Libya was picked out of the crowd, and it is my deduction that he was picked out of the crowd perhaps because he was not looking like all the other Jews it was Passover feast in Passover feast people came from all over they would make this one trip in life and they come from far far away to honor their God he was a Jewish man and so people saw this man by people I mean the Roman soldiers and they perhaps picked him out of the crowd because he looked different now I'm not going to make more assumptions what I do know is that he's from northern Africa And this is, let me show you guys a picture of what I think he looks like. And so, there is Simon of Cyrene, Northern African. They pick him out of the crowd. Why wouldn't they pick somebody else out of the crowd? And I'm going to explain this. This is important. They didn't, pick him, they didn't pick somebody else out of the crowd because Jews were not supposed to be anywhere near blood or touch blood during their Passover feast. That would make them anathema. That would make them unclean. You understand what I'm trying to say? This is the Passover feast. They pick somebody of the crowd as to not rile up everybody else. How dare you pick him? He's, my, he's my, my brother. He's my cousin. How dare you? So they probably picked somebody who looked from far away. They picked somebody who was different. And they picked Simon of Cyrene. And I don't know if you know this, but Simon of Cyrene was not mentioned much in the Bible. Only in that part of the scripture. This is found in all the Gospels, but I'm going to focus on the book of Mark. Because in the book of Mark, it tells us who he is. It tells us who his children are. And it's amazing that Paul uses their names as of knowing exactly who he's addressing. These are people that became pillars of the faith. These are people that impacted nations. You see, Simon of Cyrene would become not only a man of God, but a pioneer in the gospel. Why is this important for me to tell you? Because 25 years later, we may change the image now, go back to the scripture. I want you guys to, to open up to this part of the Bible real quick. Mark chapter 15, 2021. Mark 15, 20, 21, and it's an amplified version. This is such an exciting part for me because 25 years after this is written, it says, After they had mocked him, they took off the purple robe and put his own clothes on him, and they led him out of the city to crucify him. They forced into service a passerby coming from the countryside, Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. I don't know how Rufus' mom became as a mother to Paul. All I know is that Paul had a heavy past. All I know is that Paul would murder Christians. That Paul would take them out of their homes. Drag them 
and persecute the church. Paul had a past of violence. Paul was a religious man. Paul had years of training to become prideful, to become even bitter, I would say. Yes, Paul had an encounter, but you and I know, all of us know, that you could have an encounter with God. and You still need help. We still need process. I don't know at some point, I don't know where he needed that love. Because the Bible doesn't tell us. It's not thick enough. I don't know if at some point Paul was looking down. At some point Paul was feeling bad. I want to think, I want to believe that this woman that became like a mother to him, perhaps Paul felt what I felt. When my mother saw me sad or down or angry at myself. Or perhaps I had failed at something. Or maybe the way your mother has been caring, kind. I don't know if Paul was extra thinkative that day. Or Paul that day was upset. He was mad. Maybe he was struggling because the work of God was facing opposition. And maybe this woman, the wife of Rufus. The wife of of Simon and Sarin, the mother of Rufus. Perhaps she told him. And I say perhaps... Because it doesn't tell us. But I know what a mother is like. I don't know. Maybe she told him. My, my husband <laughs> saw the face of Jesus. My husband carried the cross of Christ. My husband heard him say, Father, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. Believe me, if Jesus was here, he would have said the same thing to you. I don't know. Maybe this woman came to know the Lord through her husband also. Maybe this woman became such a woman of God because she saw the radical transformation of Simon. I don't know. Maybe these kids follow the Lord because there's genuine conversions. I don't know. It is so hard for children to follow God if their father is an unrepented Christian. But I see this man who perhaps was stained his shirt, his hands by the very blood of Jesus. But his heart was washed clean. What if Simon of Cyrene has such an impact in his family that Paul later was impacted by the black man who carried that cross? Am I making sense that this man who looked so different would then spiritually adopt the one who wrote two-thirds of the New Testament? Think about what I'm telling you. That the love of this woman would impact this man who has impacted you and impacted me. My name is Pablo because my mom was impacted by that man's life. Pablo and Paul in English, right? I want you to think about this. That this woman would have such an impact on the man who has impacted our lives in such a tremendous way. The book of Corinthians was written by Paul. The book of Philippians was written by Paul. Romans was written written by Paul. Titus, Timothy was written by Paul. Should I go on? All these books that have encouraged you, blessed you. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. And I don't know at some point, perhaps this mother encouraged him. See, Paul is the one who wrote those verses that you and I hear in weddings. Verses that I myself have said, and it was easy to pull them up and remember, because I've repeated them many times. Love is patient, love is kind, it is not jealous, love does not brag, and it is not arrogant, does not act unbecomingly, it does not seek its own, it is not provoked, does not take into account wrong wrong suffered, does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices in the truth. Bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things, love never fails. Paul wasn't married. Maybe he said it because he wasn't asking, (laughs) No, actually, some people said that he might have been married. We don't know. That was not thick enough. What we do know is that Paul had someone that loved him like a mother. So what I did is a little bit of a, I don't know how you'd call it. Just think of how I feel like mothers act. I've seen how Eoni has acted with so many of you as a mother to you. I saw the way you guys have honored her today, and it's so beautiful. I saw the text messages and the way you guys just really love on your pastors, Pastor Laura. I've seen them become spiritual mothers and love you and care for you and cry with you, cry for you, correct you, even if you don't like it. Mm-mm-mm. Because that is a mother too, isn't it? Otherwise, it's just a grandma. <laughs> Grandmas just give you candy and don't correct you. But moms, they have to form you. Ooh, that stung somebody. Praise the Lord. But instead, right, if, what if you switch that word, love is patient? Let me just say it like this. From what I've experienced of my mom... And what I've seen on amazing mothers. Mom is patient. Mom is kind. Mom is not jealous of my accomplishments. Mom doesn't brag to me. She brags about me. Mom is not arrogant. She served me when I should be serving her. Mom doesn't act unbecomingly. She actually taught me what honoring others means. 
Mom doesn't seek her own. She will eat potatoes so I can have the last piece of chicken. Mom is not easily angered unless it's for my own good. Mom does not keep record of wrongs. She actually loves me like she's never been hurt by me before. Mom doesn't delight in unrighteousness but rejoices with the truth even if that truth hurts her. Mom always protects with furious love. Mom bears all things more than I'll ever know. Mom believes in me even if others don't. Mom always hopes even when my hope is gone. Mom endures all things and most for my sake. Mom never fails. <laughs> if there is, no, there is no law that can stop a mother's love. What if Paul was inspired by not a wife? What if Paul felt that love? Yes, directly from God. But did you know that God uses people? I'm asking you, what if Paul was so blessed and impacted by people in his life? What if the book of Corinthians was impacted by someone like this? Why do I bring this up? Of course, we're not going to form doctrine out of this. This is not something I'm going to write a book about, neither should you, because it is a lot of induction. It's a lot of things that we're deducing, right? We're like, okay, well, this, this, this. The Bible doesn't literally say that. What I do know is this. When you hear someone say, she's like a mother to me, what does it mean to you? What does it mean to someone that she became like my mom? It means she loved me unconditionally. It means she gave me even though she didn't have to. It means she looked after me. It means she worried unnecessarily. Amen, moms? Sometimes you worry so much. Where are they? They're in the room. They're in the room. <laughs> Sometimes moms, when they don't hear a noise, that's when you worry the most. Sometimes unnecessarily. Moms worry. Moms love. Mom cares. When you don't eat, they worry because you're not eating. When you eat, they worry because you're eating too much. Moms worry. Amen? Amen? Moms love you so much. I don't know how many of you have the blessing to still have your mom here in this earth, in this world. Now, how many of you have the blessing, I guess, I would say to have your mom near you in a place where you can actually reach out, at least via phone. I want to encourage you to really genuinely recognize that God has given you so much. I kind of smiled a little bit when it says mom is perfect because you and I know that mom is not perfect. But that's the one that I was like, I don't know if I could do that. But then I realized her love is perfect. Like maybe they themselves make mistakes, but the love of a mother, man, could not go wrong. I encourage you today to say, God, show me how to love like a mother. Show me how to care for people in this way. Show me, God, to reflect those traits that you have for me. You know, God used your mom, and she still uses, in some of your cases, you still have your mom alive, like my case. What a beautiful time that we have to appreciate them, to love them, to care for them. I want to encourage you to think about this. Paul, who has blessed us, was so blessed by some woman. I don't know, maybe she was walking down the street, and they would ask, who's that? That's my son. What are you talking about? It's like me and, <laughs> me and my kids. I'm dark. They're light-skinned. They're like, hair, hair's all curly. I'm like, I promise you they're mine. Like, I didn't, I didn't steal these kids. They're not for sale. Like, they are my children. And, they, you know, now, of course, sometimes you could see some features. But, but I think Paul was like, hey, this is my mom introducing her. You know what a beautiful thing? I could just see her different attire because she was from, from, from Africa, northern Africa. And yet he loved her. He cared for her. He doesn't say that about anyone else. He doesn't say that about anyone. He doesn't say, he just says, she's like a mother to me, like a dear mother to me. What if we learn, guys, seriously, not only to appreciate that love, but to have that kind of love, to say, God, give me that love. You know, I don't want to get into some weird, you know, uh, like I said, this is not a doctrine. This is me sharing you, my heart, me sharing with you that God uses people, flawed people, to show us his great love. But what if we love that way? What if your love was patient? What if your love was kind? What if you kept no record of wrongs? What if you weren't prideful or boastful? Am I making sense? What if you loved like you've never been hurt before? What if we actually endured and not just cut rank when we don't feel like it? What if we love like a mom? Moms can walk out. I love what Le Le Lenny said in the video. It was so cool. It's like, mom, you could have left me. Yeah. But moms stick through it, don't they? Man, what an amazing thing. How many moms have stuck through it? And so I want to encourage us to do something else. Last thing, I just want to, like I said, today, message will be a little bit different. But I want to ask you, 
What if God is putting somebody in your way, in your path, that will impact generations, that will impact thousands of people? Rufus' mom didn't know that Paul would change our nation, our world. The book of Romans, the letter that you and I just read, was used to change the world. Just to put it in perspective, Martin Luther, in the 14th century, was so impacted by the book of Romans, he changed the course of the church. Just to think about what I'm trying to tell you, the book of Romans has changed our lives. It is in the book of Romans where we learn so much about the righteousness of God, about the old nature of self, the, do, the new nature in Christ. I promise you, if you stick to the book of Romans, your life will change. It will impact you so much. The book of Romans has been so pivotal. And in this book, this man is impacted by this northern African woman who could have had nothing to do with him. But she did. What if the people you touch, maybe they're not from your same walk of life. Maybe they're people that are from far away. Maybe they don't even speak the same language. Maybe you don't have much in common in music or background or trait. But what if you learn to love like a mother? You don't know who those people will touch or impact. I'm reminded of the, the story, true story of Billy Graham. The way he gave his life to Christ. He entered this small little church and this preacher was preaching to the multitudes. But there was no one else in that building but Billy Graham. This was a failed church. This pastor was a failed pastor. He was preaching. And that, I remember as I was reading this, I'm like, man, would I preach that way? Like when I pre If it was just Victoria here, would I preach to you back there and to you back there and to you up there? Would I preach to the multitudes? Or would that day I would say, man, no one is coming. Hey, Victoria, why don't we just go for coffee? You know, like, yeah, let's just do cell group. But this man preached as though he was preaching to multitudes. And Billy Graham gave his life to Christ. And Billy Graham would indefinitely be preaching to multitudes. He preached to millions and millions and millions and millions of people. To presidents, to prime ministers. He preached in, in Muslim nations. He preached in all nations. Billy Graham, that one guy that was there, was ministered to as though there was multitudes. Because there was multitudes behind him. I guess what God is trying to tell us, if you would accept it, that you don't know who you're impacting. You don't know what kind of deeds the Lord will do with that person. Even if that person has a terrible past. You know, Paul had a terrible past. Not only was Paul terrible in his past, but Paul was someone who people didn't believe in. You don't just persecute the church that hard, that bad, for that long, and all of a sudden become a leader in the church. You know, there's people along the path that will help you, that will strengthen you, that will stamp you. I guess you will say they will endorse you and boost you forward. I know that this family blessed Paul so much, impacted him in such a way that Paul would then have the confidence to say, I have an endorsement from these people. I want to ask you to do something today. I want to ask you to ask the Lord, pray really, God, show me how to love differently. Show me how to love unconditionally. God, show me how to love just like this. Just like Corinthians says, right? I'm going to read it to you once again, not as confrontation, but perhaps to ask if we love that way, if we love our family that way. You know, as a husband, I have so much to learn, guys. And I'm not just saying that, like, oh, I'm humble. Like, I have so much to learn. I don't have the luxury not to learn. My kids need to know, man, I have so much to learn. Man, I have so much to learn. I have so much to learn. But can I tell you this? As I read this scripture, and as I read the Paul letters, letters of Paul, I'm like, God, if you could do it with that guy, you can do it with me. Amen. If you could do it through that man, perhaps you can do it through me. And I would just encourage you now to say, God, will you use me in people's lives? Help me to love unconditionally. Help me to love like this with patience. God, help my love to be kind. Maybe with your family. Lord, help me to not be jealous. Lord, help me please to not brag when you're doing something in my life or through my life. God, help me to not be arrogant and think that I could do things on my own. Lord, Help me, God, to be honoring and not be unbecomingly. Help me, Lord, to love and not seek my own. God, help me to not be easily provoked. Nowadays, we call that triggered. Lord, help me. Please listen. To not take into account when I've been hurt. 
to not keep a record, to not be so good with numbers when someone hurts me. God, help me, please, to not rejoice with unrighteousness. You may say, I never do that, Pastor. Really? Have you ever laughed at a joke that you're not supposed to laugh at? Have you been on the side of unrighteousness just because it feels good? Help me, God, to not rejoice unless it's true. Help me to find out first if it's real, if it's true. What if this? God, help me to bear all things, not only the things that I like. God, help me to bear all things, because if you could bear all things, it's so much easier to bear all people. Amen? God, help me to believe all things. Have you lost faith? Have you become so hurt or jaded that faith is something so foreign to you? What if we pray this prayer today? God, help me to have that kind of love. Help me to have that kind of faith. Next one. God, help me to believe all things. God, help me to hope in all things. God, help me to endure all things. Help me so my love does not fail. I believe today more than ever that we have the power to impact people. And you don't know who they will impact. I don't know. I preach different, as you guys know. Sometimes I go super hard on you guys. And sometimes we lay the, we just, poof, my coach would say like, anyway. So, so it, it is not easy sometimes to preach that way. Because you feel like you rebuke people, you know. And I don't want to be the angry preacher either. And I guess I'm not angry all the time. Am I angry? No, I'm not angry. No, no. no. <laughs> but today I really want to encourage you guys. I really want to just ask you guys. Number one, let's love our moms hard. Like, love them, honor them, care for them. Amen? As long as they're here with us, honor them. And if they're not here with you anymore, honor them. Honor everything they did in you. Honor every ounce of investment they put into your life. Amen? Honor your mother. So you can live long lives in the land that God's given to you. Amen? Second thing, let's love like a mother. That sounds weird, <laughs> but it is true. Let's love so hard. Let's love so genuinely, so beautifully that people cannot help but be impacted by us. Amen? Would you stand up with me for a second, please? So, Simon of Cyrene, going back to this guy, okay? He's now carrying this cross. His children are there. His wife is there. I just want you guys to remember this moment. Maybe you saw it in a movie. Maybe you read it in the scripture. Maybe you're like me where you read something and you're trying to imagine how it happened. I don't want to take you to that place. It's called the Via Dolorosa. Some people know it as the, the passion of the Christ, the, the road where the blood of Jesus was just smeared all over this cobblestone. It's on the way to Golgotha, this mount called the, the skull, where Jesus would be crucified condemned die poor broken without anything to his name not even the tomb where he would lay because it was borrowed by Joseph of Arimathea it's there where he would die without anything not even clothes he would be stripped of everything his dignity they'd be screaming at him spitting on him pushing him people shouting cursing kicking him pulling his hair Shoving the crown of thorns deeper in. This carpenter who was used to carrying wood. Couldn't carry that wood anymore. And I say couldn't because I don't believe that he couldn't. I believe that God allowed this man to step in. Simon of Cyrene. This man was used to carrying lumber. See Jesus I know has the power. And had the power to call angels to his aid. But you know he didn't call angels to his name. He called this man. He allowed this man to carry a cross. And I say that because it's all part of his plan. I say that because one more kick to the gut. Maybe he could have taken five more, ten more. I think Jesus could have made it up the skull on his own. But he allowed this man to intervene. He allowed this man to carry a cross. Why? Maybe because Paul needed a mother. Let me repeat that to you so it'll sink in. Maybe because Paul, who was alone in the faith many times, who didn't even make it to the twelve. Listen, Paul was not one of the twelve disciples. Who calls Paul an apostle? Who named him an apostle? Was it the 12 apostles? Paul the apostle who wrote all these letters was not one of the 12. I study the scripture and I'm telling you, he didn't have that face to face except on the way to Damascus, right? 
You guys remember that, right? This is Paul having this, 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 this encounter with God. Yet he didn't physically walk with Jesus. How did Paul know? Who showed Paul the love of God? I read his relationships and Paul's relationships are of leader disciple. Paul usually in the scripture has Timothy. He has Titus. He has people around him that he's ministering to. He may have people on his side like Peter who eventually had a little scuffle with and kind of disagreed. He had people on his side. But who was above Paul? Who was caring for Paul? Who was the leader of Paul? Who was the pastor, the priest of Paul? Yeah, of course we know that he was taught by Gamaliel, right? He was a man who was taught by Gamaliel, but he wasn't taught by Gamaliel in the scripture. He was taught as Gamaliel as a Jew. Gamaliel would not have continued to teach him after he gave his life to Christ. Who fathered Paul? Who mothered Paul? I wonder if Simon of Cyrene, I wonder, I don't know, but what if somebody loved him enough to bring him in and say, Paul, you're loved too. Yes, you're giving so much, but let me give you something. Paul has people in his life too. And I wonder, again, if Simon of Cyrene wasn't knocked down, I mean, was, was stepped in when Jesus was knocked down, if God allowed it so that Paul would be ministered to about the love of God and the care of God by this beautiful family. I want to encourage you to remember this. Everything you're going through, whatever you encourage, whatever you encounter, whatever suffering you think you're going through, wherever God places you, what if it's for somebody else to be loved? What if it's for somebody else to be encouraged? What if it's for somebody out there who God will use mightily? You have no idea. And you think you're just being part of some dark plan. Why would this happen to me? Why would they choose me? What an injustice. What if it's not an injustice? What if it's God placing you in a place where you'll become the greatest blessing to generations that you may not even meet? What if God sees eternity different than you and I? What if God's future is different? What if your sin, your suffering, your troubles, the things that you feel like you can't handle, the heavy burdens, the heavy crosses of our lives, what if they're meant to bless generations after us? See, we need to be different. We need to think different about the plans of God in our lives. Why do I bring this up to you? I know it seems odd and it's just all over the, the, the Bible, but I promise you it's there. When you look into the scripture, a God who has plans, even for suffering, a God who has plans, when you don't realize what's happening, I want you to know that God loves you so much. He's preparing so much for you. He loves you. He loves you. He has so much prepared for you. He's going to use people that you never thought would be used in your life. People that you don't know just yet. Maybe you do. But they're going to love you so much just the way God loves you. Let's do something. Today as a church in Mother's Day, let's commit to love our moms more. But also, let's also commit to receive that love and to give that kind of love to people. People that are not always like you. People that are different. That come from different backgrounds. That you don't have much to relate with. I love that Paul says, I become all things to all people for the sake of or perhaps winning some to Christ. What if you learn about something you never learned about before in hopes that somebody will come to Christ? Amen? What a different church that is, isn't it? What a beautiful kind of people that is that say, God, use me to love like moms do. Amen? Close your eyes. Let me pray. As odd as that sounds to some of you men, especially those manly men, right? To love like a mom. You know what that means. Holy Spirit of God, help us, Lord, to love different. God, help us love. Help us to love, God. Help us to see people with that unconditional love. God, help us, God, to see people the way that you see us, love. Lord, thank you so much, please. God, thank you so much. I ask you right now that if there's anybody here, Lord, who today in Mother's Day is missing their mom. Today in Mother's Day, God, somebody who, that lady that I talked to earlier today, Lord, whose child passed away, Three years ago, a mom in pain. God, I pray, God, that today you remind those that are missing a piece. That they would realize, Lord, that you have a beautiful plan also. That you're working. That you're still there. That you love them. You encourage them, God. I pray, God, that you fill the voids with your love, with your truth, with your grace. God, we pray right now, God, that you encourage. That give them of your strength. Lord God, that in their weaknesses, you would manifest your strength so much, Lord, that they would know that you're there. God, thank you so much for the moms that are here. Thank you so much, God, for the moms that are still in our lives. Thank you, God, because even in their humanity, they still manage to reflect 
godly love. Thank you so much. Would you bless them? Help us, God, to be a greater blessing, to not have the luxury to forget, but rather, God, to have the diligence to love. God, help us to love consistently. God, help us, Lord, to change. Help the men in this room, Lord, to learn and to teach their children. Help me, God, to teach my kids to honor their mom. Please, God, help us. Help us, Lord, to honor those amazing people you put in our lives, Lord. God, help us, God, to love people the way that moms love. God, help us, Lord, to be that kind of person, God, that sees people with those kind of eyes. Lord God, thank you so much, Jesus. Thank you so much. We feel so honored. We feel so blessed that you give us so much. Today, in Mother's Day, we recognize that we are loved beyond belief. God, if there's anyone here that feels alone, if there's anybody here that feels like they don't have that kind of love, that they would stop and realize that you are there with them. God, that you put people in their lives that will love them that way, that you remind them daily how much they're worth to you. God, that you would be willing to give your life for even one of them. If there's somebody here that hasn't yet surrendered their life to God, would you simply pray a prayer? It is not the words that save you. It's the conviction, the faith, the belief in a God who loves you, that died for you on the cross. It's the confession of your mouth and the faith of your heart that would allow you to walk with Christ for all eternity. If you want to do that, if you want to surrender your life to God, if you want to receive His in exchange for yours, what do you tell Him? Jesus Christ, today I give you my life. I surrender my heart to you. And I ask you to change me, God. Change me. Make me the person that you want me to be. Would you forgive me, Lord, for all my sins? Thank you for dying in the cross and paying a debt that I could never pay. I surrender it all to you. Thank you for resurrecting to give me eternal life. I receive your gift of salvation. It is in your name I pray. Amen and amen.